Good evening. I am the skeptic, and I love horror. But horror is not always something that's blunt, in your face, ready to make you jump right out of your pants. Sometimes horror is about looking at the darkness in our lives, or the darkness within ourselves. So we're going to look at a more modern movie today that's entitled The Babadook. This is the directorial debut of Jennifer Kent, who also wrote the story. She based the movie after her short film called Monster, which is very similar in its elements. The real reason I bring her up, however, is because I appreciate her insight on the horror genre. I don't think a lot of the filmmakers making horror now know its worth, or realize the potential of the genre. Just because it's a horror film doesn't mean it can't be deep. Horror is a pure form of cinema. I think some fairy tales are designed to keep kids in line and make them stay safe. And there are the other ones, the ones I'm attracted to, that point out the chaos of life to kids. Because it's not perfect, it's not always neatly tied up. I think that's what horror can do as well. To give you fair warning, I do have a lot to say about this picture. To jump ahead on what this movie is about and what makes it so special is that the terror derives from the representation of the mental illness between the mother and son characters. I personally would recommend anyone to watch this film, especially those who have experienced any kind of mental illness or trauma, including anxiety, depression, loss, or grief. You may very well find solace within this film. The psychological horror elements really sell with the character's experience turning a domestic drama into an emotional journey that can be both ugly and terrible, but is part of the human experience. Another fun note from the director, for those of you concerned with women's issues, Kent has stated that she sought to tell a story about facing up the darkness within ourselves, the fear of going mad, and an exploration of parenting from a real perspective. In regard to parenting, Kent further explained in October 2014 that I'm not saying we all want to go and kill our kids, but a lot of women struggle, and it is a very taboo subject. Who are you? Well, hey, you're the one posing as a gay icon just because Netflix uploaded you to the wrong category. It's a true story. Nonetheless, let's begin the review. Our story takes place in Australia. How can you tell? Check out that jelly! We're introduced to Amelia, who is having a hard time sleeping as of late between working at a retirement center, her son's behavioral disorder, and dealing with the loss of her husband. He got killed driving Mum to the hospital to have me. Sam's just like his dad was. Always speaks his mind. You also notice lots of references throughout the movie of old horror films as well as fairy tales. I'll kill the monster when it comes. Monster? What monster? Is there one yet? The point being, we see Samuel loves his mother and wants to protect her. Amelia loves her son, but is feeling repelled by him to say the least. Mm. Don't do that! It doesn't help either that the school is having trouble dealing with Samuel's misbehavior and wants him to always be monitored in the classroom. If you have kids, you might understand the difficulty of wanting to help your child according to what they need instead of just thrusting them into a rigid system that's a one-size-fits-all. So... She takes him out of school with no real plan. Well, it's step one. That night, Samuel picks a book for his bedtime story and hands it to his mother. It's an unusual book with mysterious origins. And this is where the terror is set up for the movie. We are now introduced to the Babadook. Ba -ba -ba -duk, duk, duk. <laughs> when has a top hat ever been scary? Oh, yeah. The pop up pages become more intense. Mom, does it hurt the boy? And even a little threatening. How sweet that is. <clears throat> oh, come on. It's an unnecessarily dark book that leads to the obvious cut of a little boy crying. It's basic. The root of comedy is misery. It's just a little bit funny. <laughs> For now. To take note on the environmental details, the house you might notice has a very specific design. The walls are dark blue and gray, which if you understand color being used to set tone and mood, this palette definitely conveys depression. He didn't want to go to your house because it's too depressing. Even the harsh use of black almost makes the house look like a drawing, just like the book. Ah, interesting comparison. That the book reflects their life. Creepy. Hell, even the mirror from the ring makes an appearance. In comparison, Amelia herself is always depicted as pale, tired, even her hair color melds with her light skin, giving that ghostly contrast to the set. As if to say she's sick, or drained of life. Even her job is zapped of all color, leaving a disgusting, boring white. Since reading the book, Amelia starts hearing noises and whispers at night, and the lights flicker. Samuel makes a friggin' backpack catapult! Ha, 
dog, that's one crafty kid. He's gonna make a damn fine Ghostbuster. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting Babadoops. He also practices magic. Where did you get those firecrackers? Uh, internet? That's the end of the internet. He also sets up traps in the basement where all his dad's stuff is kept, which Amelia is not happy about. This is where she starts having... symptoms. We see her losing sleep as the fast-forward edit shows us her night passing by surreally. She starts snapping at people. Real tragedy. Not having time to go to the gym anymore. How do you cope? You must have so much to talk about with those poor disadvantaged women. Finds no one will help her. I just can't help you right now. And pushes people away. The truth is he's so disobedient he can't go to school anymore. I hate you! She won't let me have a birthday party and she won't let me have a dance! Awkward. You can't tell me you wouldn't feel similarly to this. There is no Condoms. Because your future could be this. Do you play with protection? Yeah! A sudden symptom of schizophrenia has Amelia take her son to see the doctor. I would like to point out how it seems the film is building up the son as the one with mental illness and the mother just losing patience. However, knowing that, you can see her symptoms and actions building up like one long sequence of tension rising. In fact, from here on, Samuel tries keeping guard against the creature, but doesn't always know how to behave. A lot of admiration for the kid despite, even if he did push his cousin off the treehouse. But she was a bitch. Old dad died so he didn't have to be with me. That's not true! Jeez. Amelia tries fixing her problems the only way an average person can. Drugs! Literally falling to sleep. Sleep appears to be the answer at first, but then... Morning. That's right. The book she tore up earlier is pieced back together crudely, and the previously blank pages are now filled with disturbing content. It even predicts her killing the dog, her son, and even herself in a blissfully psychotic rage. She does what any rational person would do. She burns it. Then goes to the police. How do you know it's the same person? Because of what he wrote in the book. The book you burnt. Well, to be fair, she is just a little sleep deprived as of late. It's from here on that her symptoms get worse. She sees the Babadook appear in numerous locations, including in her room, in her neighbor's house, on the phone, the police station, and sees its influence in other places. She even sees it up close. Well, that is certainly something I'm keeping an eye out for tonight. As if the power of the Babadook, aka the monster, grows stronger ever since the book was burned. Why? Like the mental issues, or the presence, it needs to manifest some way. If not as a book, then growing under her skin, like the narration says, the more you deny, the stronger I get. The story really turns around when Samuel is so worried and even scared of his mother that he tries to call their neighbor for help, while Amelia looks, um, intimidating. Is this what I have to do? This blurs the line of rather she is literally going a little crazy, or if this is the quote-unquote monster's influence. Even the little dog flees. She starts seeing bugs and hears an insect-like sound when the Babadook is around. She finds these bugs spawning from a hole in the wall behind her refrigerator, which disappears as soon as Child Services shows up, which goes swimmingly, by the way. I'm a bit tired from the drugs Bob gave me. Ha! <laughs> these cuts to embarrassing moments are perfectly timed. The idea of seeing insects in a hidden hole is very telling of Amelia's mental state. It's classic psychology that feeling and sensing insects crawling on you is indicative of feeling violated or disgusting, as if crawling under her skin. Perhaps you could say the disappearing hole in the wall says something about the secret she keeps from herself, lying to herself about what her underlying issues are. Hey, it's better than waking up one morning having turned into a giant cockroach. Literary reference. To further her problems, she starts missing work, becomes unresponsive even when people are nice, disturbingly sits in the tub, she snaps at her son, you go and, eat shit? and even sees him dead, as well as sees her husband telling her to bring her the boy. You just need to bring me the boy. You mean Samuel. Let's not forget the subliminal images of murder and death, which predict Samuel dead on his birthday. There's one of two ways to interpret this. Either the Babadook is intentionally showing her all of these clips in order to convince her to kill her son as well as herself, or she's only noticing these particular clips of death and murder because that is where her headspace is at. But to make it official, the Babadook finally mm, enters her. Oh, that makes sense. 
All her symptoms are now at their peak. So much so, her twitching is making the lens twitch too. Aw, poor dear. Unfortunately, the prediction of her killing the dog comes true, which does not bode well for the rest of their future. She tries to go after Sam, screaming like the Babadook. She has a moment of remorse. I'm sorry. I'm sick, Sam. Well, that's strong of her to admit. I want you to meet your dad. Wait, what? Yeah, Sam doesn't buy it either. Sorry, Mommy! At least he's polite. When you think that contraption was ridiculous, it actually works. And he utilizes a few Home Alone-inspired traps. Samuel gets the upper hand and ties her down. I know you don't love me. The brother dog won't let you. But I love you, Mum. And I always will. In a very touching and bizarrely tense sequence, Samuel reaches towards his mom, not only with loving words, but even with touch. This makes for a much more intense exorcism than I've seen in any other film. Samuel's efforts work, almost at the expense of his life, and Amelia expels all the hate. This brings her back to her senses, but the Babadook is not finished. It drags Samuel back upstairs and tries to hold Amelia back with an image of her late husband. But Amelia makes it upstairs and confronts the monster, as of setting a literal stage. She has a screaming match with it, if you touch my son again, I'll fucking kill you! and it retaliates with dinosaur noises. In the end, she defeats it. And how cool to see it lose its manifested physical form, but the clothes still breathe to show its presence is still there and alive. Still not dead, but weakened, it flees back to the basement where all of Amelia's memories are kept. Metaphorical. Sometime after, we see Child Services visit again on Samuel's birthday, which the TV earlier predicted him dead on his birthday. So, yay! Survival party! All is good. Mom and son hug, Samuel does magic, but Amelia still feeds the Babadook in the basement. This ends the movie with the monster locked up and the mother and son moving on together. Now we're about to get into some interpretation. One of the main questions being, is the monster real? Some may view it as some out-of-nowhere creature that feeds on people's intense emotions and psychological baggage. In that regard, it makes the Babadook an oddly specific monster, but also a terrifying one, because it would never get discovered, always hiding behind people's crazy actions. That feeling of helplessness could be terrifying. In my perspective, however, the monster is 100% a reflection of Amelia's mental illness and trauma manifested into a separate entity. Bear with me for some comparison. In the movie A Beautiful Mind, the true story of the schizophrenic mathematician John Nash shows in the end how he returned to his work without his medications, allowing his visions of other people to be separate from his life. Gradually, their influence became less and less, fading into the background, but always there. For those of you who have dealt with depression, anxiety, trauma, etc., you probably find that these problems never 100% go away, like Amelia's Babadook or the death of her husband. Even though she can't cure her problems, she did learn to compartmentalize them love around them, and become stronger, which I think makes for an impactful message for people in similar situations. Another example is the TV show Dexter. Alright, he's a serial killer, but he learned to control his urges so that he can learn to live like a normal human being. He identifies this other side of him as a separate entity which he calls his dark passenger. As long as he is careful, balances his life with his pleasure, and only kills other people, then he can still live a pretty decent life with his family. Similarly. The Babadook itself is implied to look like the late father, as clued by the clothes hanging on the wall, as well as his occasional appearances. The name Babadook, the director explains, was also meant to be a nonsensical made-up word to sound fairy ish So this creature appears to be a culmination of Amelia's guilt, grief, the memory of her husband, and the stories that she read to her son. Another piece of evidence is that there is a mention of her once having been a writer. Claire tells me you're a writer. Did some kids stuff. You just need to get back into it. A children's book author that has never shown performing such an action, but is still somehow important. Hmm... Ellipsis. So okay, is there a monster? Or a book? It doesn't matter. Because the movie is about mental illness and what it looks and feels like. Like depression, symptoms are not always clear-cut or easily defined. So for one last example, let's look at a term called Wisdom Literature. Wisdom literature tells stories with a kernel of truth, but it's the fantastical details that help convey the underlying feeling and meaning. Taking a look at a more recent movie, The Life of Pi, it tells how the boy Pi survives across the ocean with a tiger, 
However, an amazing personal story is not so amazing when you hear the basic facts. In truth, it's revealed Pi was stranded on a boat with a murderer. The bare bones truth is intense, but doesn't speak to everybody. But a fairy tale version conveys the emotions behind the experience, and that's what the Babadook does as well. That's why it's not only a great movie, it's a great movie, period. Now we're all not going to get the same thing out of watching this film, and that's fine. How we relate to life experiences through film is different for everybody, just as what individuals find scary is biased. You may not take away what I did from this movie, but that doesn't mean plenty of people didn't feel something watching it. Now, not to get too personal on you, but when some family drama rose up, I was inspired to write this book, which parallels the Babadook in a lot of ways. You can see this book featured in my short film, Doppelganger, which is uploaded to my channel. The art style was based on my brother's drawings when he was a toddler. I pieced together this book in 2008, and the Babadook was released in 2014. With that said, in evidence that I didn't copy anything, I think that's telling that there's some universal message being said here. At least for a few people. Of course, then let's move on to the scares. The Pop Pop Book. The art style pops, pun intended, as if the monster itself is telling the story, and as if the Babadook has a macabre glee to tear this family apart. Random appearances. There's subtlety in seeing him subliminally, anywhere in quick cuts, making it feel like he's invading your life. Night Encounter. While helpless in bed, you see unnatural movement and strange sounds coming closer, followed by a fast, creepy image. Possession through influence. As terrifying as it is to have your mom possessed by pure hatred coming after you, it's the not knowing if this is the creature or her doing this that makes it so unnerving. Even the exorcism is powerful in how touching it is, as well as horrifying. The monster never dies. Because our inner demons never die, can you trust yourself or be strong enough against them? Sound effects tell a story. There's a nice blend of chants, piano, low chords, and an insect-like sound when the Babadook is close. In fact, Kent and her crew made quite a few of the sound effects specifically for this film. Lighting tells a story. There's a heavy use of German expressionism, utilizing heavy shadows to show off the vague presence of the Babadook as well as symbolizing a duality and transformation within Amelia to show her progression. Editing tells a story. To build suspense even when the monster isn't around, quite a few scenes were shot with two actions occurring at the same time. Usually Amelia talking to someone, seeing her anxiety or other emotions swelling, while Samuel is taking part in questionable activities like climbing a swing or pushing his cousin off of the treehouse. Samuel's actions usually stop Amelia's actions, bringing an abrupt close to the scene. This idea is gradually fused together as Amelia and Samuel are isolated in their house away from other people. I hope you enjoyed today's review, and I hope something within you experienced a transformation. <sighs> but hopefully not like that. Until next time, have a frightfully good evening. I've overcome a lot, and I've gotten past your shit. I've learned I'm a strong and tough individual, and I've learned to move on. Here's a bandage. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine.